Hello, I'm Ron Watkins, Pastor City Joy. I'd like to take this time to thank you for listening to this life changes message on DVD and CD. With that being said, let's move into the top of our discussion tonight. Tonight we'll be dealing with Yahweh's vision and your vision for your marriage and for your family, part two. Uh, turn with me, if you will, to Genesis chapter 2. And let's take a look at verses 15 through 17. And uh, tonight we'll be reading out of the Aramaic and the book. Who knows what the first mentioned principle is? Amen? Amen. Well, you should know that by now as many times as I have made mention of it. The first mentioned principle is where God first mentions any subject in the Bible. Amen? And tonight we're going to be dealing with family and marriage. Amen? And it's very important that we understand how God set it up. I want you to understand that God instituted marriage. He ordained marriage, amen. And he had a, third, he had a certain uh, a mindset about it, amen. And it would behoove us to catch a glimpse, amen, and hold on to that glimpse concerning marriage, amen. We're going to deal with the, the woman tonight, amen, in, in the setting of the family. But man and I, we're going to deal with the man, amen, the man draw, amen. Uh, should it not be, in regard to marriage, should it not be how and what Elohim said it should be? He set it up to be a certain way, and we have to learn how to not only see it his way, but by faith move out of the direction if we're not uh, in the, going in the right, right direction, wisdom says move out of the direction in the mold we're in, husbands, and move in the right direction. Amen. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verses 16, 15 through 17 reads, And Yahweh Elohim placed the man in the garden of Eden as his gardener to tend and to care for it. Amen. But Yahweh Elohim gave the man this warning. You may eat any fruit in the garden except the fruit from the tree of good and evil or conscience. For its fruit will open your eyes to make you aware of what is right or, or holy or wrong and evil. Good and bad. If you eat this fruit, you will be doomed to die. Amen. And how many know that when Yahweh says not to do something, and you do it anyway, there's a consequence. Amen? But because uh, the sin is not swiftly executed, sometimes because it doesn't happen right away, amen, or ain't no consequences, yeah, I stole that sucker, amen? And then you get older, you steal a candy bar. Then you get older, you steal a pop. You get older, you steal cigarettes, Amen? Next thing you know, you're robbing banks and robbing people, amen. And the consequences one day find you to be unprepared before what's about ready to happen to you, amen. So even though it starts out small and he has mercy on you, that doesn't mean you should continue on and go in a direction, amen. The same thing in your marriage, amen. Husbands and wives, just because the consequences of your actions and your reactions and your conversations, amen, have not caught up with you yet, it doesn't mean they're not going to catch up with you eventually. So once again, it behooves us to learn, mm -hmm. amen, his intentions for marriage, amen. Now I notice that the first thing uh, Yahweh deals with is the man, amen. Why did he put the man first, amen? Because the man is the head, amen. Uh, Corinthians 11 tells us, I have you know, the head of every uh, a woman is man, and every, every man is Yeshua. And head of Yeshua is Yahweh, amen. So, that doesn't make much for the woman to be over, amen, except for the kids. But in his wisdom, again, he knew what he was doing, amen. And we'll deal with that later. That's not something to be, you know, uh, shown, but it's something, you know, to say, hey, you know, he's looking out for me. He knows what's best for me. So here we, here we, here we see, because I want to ask you a question. As I read that, when he told the man to keep the garden, get a job, where was the woman at when he told him that? Amen? She wasn't here yet. Oh, she wasn't here yet, amen? 
Interesting. Amen. So she wasn't there. Amen. When Elohim gave the man this instruction. Amen. The woman was certainly nowhere to be found. Amen. Why is that relevant? I'm going to tell you why. Attention all women. May I do attention all women. Amen. All the women in the house. Wives and singles. Mothers, daughters, sisters, aunts, grandmothers, great-grandmothers. May I have your attention, please? All first ladies. And now that I have your attention, I want to give you some wisdom. I want to give you some understanding that you probably don't have. Amen? And I want you to remember this statement. And I want you to remember the day. Yahweh Elohim has given your husbands, your fathers, information and revelation with authority to lead you. Amen? For your protection and your children's spiritual well-being. Amen? He did this in the way not to take nothing from you, but to protect you. Amen? And there's a reason why the woman wasn't there. Amen? And we can kind of see where, how, where, how he got out of, you know, the uh, position she was supposed to be in, amen? And sometimes, you know, we think we know, amen? We think we know, but we don't know, amen? And that just doesn't go for women, amen? That goes for men, too. But this situation, in dealing with the female species, amen, there were some things that Eve didn't receive like Adam did. Right. Adam received a direct word from Yahweh. Eve did not, amen. Right. I don't know if it really, I can't find what's recorded where Adam told Eve what Yahweh just told Adam. Mm -hmm. I can't find the recording. I assume he did because of the conversation that uh, uh, Eve had with the enemy that she should never have. But now we can see why she was deceived, amen. So and when engaging in conversation, ladies, make sure that you know what you're talking about. Make sure you know what you're doing, amen. And by all means, sometimes you have to ask your husband permission. If you're not married, sometimes if you live in your father's house, you have to ask your father's permission, amen. Because if you don't know, you need to ask, amen. Uh, so stop acting like you know everything, because you don't, and start trusting in the spiritual authority and leadership that Yahweh has provided for you as a covering. Amen? Your husband is a covering for you. Your fathers are covering you. The church is a covering for you. Why is this relevant? Because where we, God's taking us, we have to have order. We have to have spiritual order. Amen? Because the enemy will see that. Yet the enemy can come in and spot division. He can see weak spots. He can see holes in marriage. Amen? Men can see it and women can see it too. Amen? And don't think the devil won't use them to get in your marriage, amen. Don't think the devil won't use them to get in your ministry, amen. But they can't get, they can't get to it if uh, they, you're on one court. They can't get to it if you prayed up. Amen. They can't get to it, amen. And this is just wisdom, amen. We can't continue doing things as we did, amen. Married couples, I'm talking to you. In 2010, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, amen. Because the Bible says we're not ignorant to the devil's devices, amen. And though he would appear into us as an angel like the devil always has been a devil, and he'll not do nothing but be devilish, amen. So God in his mercy has allowed us, amen, to, you know, up in this point, a free pass, amen. He that has ears to hear, that will hear what the Ruach HaKadosh is saying, amen. All right, husbands, we must learn to lead our wives, amen, our own wife, amen. Not that we can have more than one. I make that clear. Paul says the condition for the elders of the bishop is one wife, amen. I was talking in general to the people, amen. Not only lead our own wife, but how we lead her, and that's in humility with much prayer, Amen. And I want you to catch this. So in harmony, we can both 
minister to one another's needs. Amen. Now I want to read verse 18. Amen. It reads, And Yahweh Elohim said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a companion for him, a helper suited to his needs. Amen. So Yahweh created the woman for the man to help him, to assist him. Not to instruct him and lecture him, but to cooperate with him. Amen. And sometimes those husbands need to be assisted. Sometimes we need to be corrected when we're misinformed. Amen. But that can be done in a godly, respectful way. Amen. And we need to know what tone to speak to our wives and husbands. Because sometimes if we don't speak that tone, amen, we shouldn't find it too big a surprise if they even, they match that tone or they go above that tone, amen. And I don't know, as I said, we need to learn how to, amen. So that means we may not be there, amen. And I included myself in that. No, I'm not a perfect husband, amen. I strive to be, I desire to be, amen. But we've got to learn to love our wives, amen. Which means that we're not there yet, amen. But at least we're moving in the right direction as of today, amen. For the purpose, even though Yahweh created the woman to minister the man's needs, clearly we can say, but Yeshua put the woman on the same level as the equal with the man, and Paul encourages uh, for the same thing, to treat them as an equal partner, amen. And I'm all for that, amen. So we can minister one another's needs. The certain things we need, amen, and why shouldn't we? Amen? Because working together to fill your calling, and that calling is a calling of fruitfulness, amen? And multiplication. Let's read Genesis chapter uh, 1, verses 27 and 28. So, Elohim made man in his image, like Elohim did make man in his image, Man and woman did he create them. And Elohim blessed them and told them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it. Amen. So he said, Be fruitful and multiply, and subdue it. Rule it. Take authority. Govern it. Amen. And that's going to be our subject later on we're going to do it. There are certain things that a husband has a right to take authority over his family. There are certain things a wife has a right to take authority in her family, amen? And Yahweh's not going to do it for you. The husband can't take authority over what the wife's going to take authority of, amen? Get the word of Yahweh in your mouth and take authority and bind some things up and lose some things in Yeshua's mighty name, amen? Anything that's not going according to Yahweh's will, according to his will, set forth in the Tanakh and the Torah of the scriptures, amen. We as individual believers, whether married or single, according to Genesis chapter 1, are not only being fruitful and multiply, because we are blessed. And that's just not uh, having babies, man. That's spiritual multiplicity. Amen. Spiritual souls, amen. He that wins souls is wise. But we're to take authority over the enemy, amen? Or whatever comes our way. Why is that relevant? That's relevant to Genesis chapter 3 when the enemy came to uh, attack uh, Eve in the form of serpent. Yahweh was speaking directly to Adam when he ministered this scripture to Adam. Subdue. I'll put you in charge. You have authority over everything. Adam had authority over the devil, amen. And guess what? You do too. Amen. amen? amen. If, if you believe that. I'm not here to try to talk into you. That's a fact. And we'll prove it uh, with more scripture later on. So you are blessed with authority. And I might add, use it or lose it. Amen. You have authority to correct children in your home, amen? If you don't correct them and beat them, who will, amen? You have authority to do that. Turn to me to Ephesians chapter 5. 
Ephesians chapter 5, and let's take a look at verses 25 through 28. 